Hey guys, and welcome back to Altcoin Buzz Spotlight with me, Leah Heilpern, the show where we speak to entrepreneurs, innovators, and thought leaders in the cryptocurrency and the blockchain space. Joining me today is Igor Baranov, the founder of XDAI Chain, a sidechain of Ethereum and the stable payment solution designed for fast and inexpensive transactions. There's XDAI, your day-to-day -day stablecoin, and then there's Stake. Stake is the volatile ERC-677 token that validators can stake. Don't forget, let us know in the comment section below who you want us to interview next. And if you enjoyed the show, then hit the like button. Igor, great to have you on the show today. Welcome to Altcoin Buzz. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. At, uh... Yeah, it's good to have you. We have lots to talk about. Um, markets are looking pretty interesting. So I do kind of just want to start on that for the minute. It would be great to hear your thoughts um, on the overall markets at the moment, because we've had a lot of talk about, you know, us being in a bull market. Um, but we've sort of seen a lot of red across the board when it comes to alts. We've sort of seen Bitcoin, you know, retracing a little bit. So what are your thoughts on this market right now? Um, I think that uh, that's temporary. Uh, I think that what we have now with all the DeFi hype and a uh, uh, lot of uh, tools um, built uh, for the last uh, couple of months, uh, they're actually shaping the industry and uh, we're just uh, at the beginning. So I hope uh, to see our industry growth and uh, the market should react uh, accordingly. Yeah, you mentioned DeFi there. Um, DeFi has been this buzzword of 2020. We keep hearing about it. A lot of people say, well, actually, potentially DeFi has been taking some of the attention away from Bitcoin, which has sort of caused this fluctuation in the market. But before we sort of delve into that, I want to just get um, a nice, simple ex explanation from you on what is DeFi? because people are sort of talking about a lot of different things, whether it be yield farming, liquid pools. Um, but if you could simplify it, how would you do it? Yeah, the, the, there are many aspects of DeFi and uh, for different uh, people, it's, uh, it's different, right? So what it is for me, uh, for me, it's, uh, uh, it's a group of applications on top of, uh, mostly on top of Ethereum, which are um, building uh, what is known as uh, Lego blocks, uh, some components uh, which are interacting with each other and using the power of composability to efficiently use uh, capital uh, on top of uh, public blockchain, right? And the application of uh, such composability, like, you know, lending, stable coins, it's, uh, it's uh, like secondary thing, right? Because what the main thing is that uh, we, have, we have all these uh, financial primitives which can interact with each other uh, in most cases, uh, without uh, uh, direct uh, uh, involvement of, of protocol creators and users can build uh, kind of new workflows to uh, automate uh, things that, well, in, in most cases that are generating uh, resources, right? And that's possible because uh, for now it's a positive sum game. So we see that uh, people are coming into DeFi. We see that uh, the parameter of TVL, which is total value locked, is increasing day to day. And uh, yesterday it was like $10 billion worth of um, um, USD locked on. Today it's it's a it's a, it's less, right? Um, uh, but that's uh, that's surprisingly. I remember, you know, a few months ago we thought like, okay, so now we crossed like two billions, right? So what? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, in a couple of months as we we'll have ten, so that's that's quite uh, impressive. But all these new things like you know yield farming and uh, farming of uh, this, all these vegetables uh, and crops, <laughs> which we see. Yeah. It's actually, it, uh, it's you know, a lot, lot of drama around it, uh, but if you think about uh, what is like it's uh, teaching us about uh, uh, finance on, uh, on decentralized markets, it's actually creating um, new instruments uh, and these instruments are quite amazing, right? Like uh, attacks on liquidity providers and the ways how these liquidity providers uh, uh, respond to them and moving of liquidity in like in billion dollars between chains, that's all. Yeah. To, 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 to watch. Yeah, it is pretty brilliant to watch. Um, you know, sort of seeing everything that's done in traditional finance now sort of being um, available on the blockchain. Um, you know, you mentioned a lot of those uh, supermarket type coins that we're seeing. Uh, so yeah, that's also quite fascinating to watch. Um, but I want to focus on you guys for the minute. So can you tell us about your move from POA to XDAI chain? Yeah, let's talk about XDAI. XDAI is, uh, is a side chain to Ethereum. So it's a, it's a form of uh, layer two scalability. So why it's layer two and not a layer one? Because the like native 
native token of, uh, of XDAI is DAI, which is based on Ethereum, and uh, most uh, uh, other tokens are breached from, from Ethereum to the sidechain. Uh, and also the like, uh, security token for, uh, for, pro for proof of stake consensus uh, is also breached from, from Ethereum. So like most assets on XDAI are breached from Ethereum, so that's why it's layer two, which is kind of extending layer one, and not a layer one, which is kind of competing, right? Um, so the, 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 the idea of, uh, of XDAI is that uh, we wanted to create a, a, a sidechain with a stable native token, which is bridged from Ethereum. So it's uh, known as um, a hard spoon when you move assets created by Jake Wan from Cosmos and uh, Vitalik, uh, the, this concept. So the concept is that you can move token from one chain to another, not to compete with uh, the like uh, original chain, but to extend functionality of this chain. So here the idea was, okay, can we create a stable chain with um, stable uh, native coin with uh, predictable prices, with predictable gas price, with predictable scalability, and so forth, right? So that's how most of the uh, software as a service and uh, infrastructure as a service uh, services are operating in uh, in, in uh, internet world, right? Think about AWS or uh, um, you know other um, uh, providers of cloud services. That's all kind of denominated in US dollars and price is predictable, right? But also all these services they have a volatile part, which is like shares of Amazon. On. But we as users, we don't see this, right? So we basically consume services and we can um, we can uh, optimize uh, our uh, usage of platforms by, you know, uh, not by uh, trying to find the time when it's like cheaper to buy stocks of Amazon, right? Um, so that's that was the concept. So the se second concept was, okay, can we make uh, payments and stable tokens without need for the like second token? And at that time, we didn't have such concept as meta transactions, so it's actually created almost at the same time. And the idea was, okay, if we have DAI as a native token and also DAI as a gas token, maybe you know we don't need the second token, right? So this should simplify payments uh, on top of like Ethereum uh, compatible applications, and that was the second idea. Uh, and uh, that's that's how we build the XDAI, uh, and that's uh, it's one more side chain. There are you know hundreds of side chains different, with different consensuses, different ideas behind. So what is making it different? It's uh, the native token is bridged from Ethereum, and also this uh, this also the concept also adopted recently by let's say Binance Smart Chain. You know CZ also took this concept and uh, BNB from uh, from Binance uh, chain to Binance Smart Chain to create a native token of BNB. Um, and the second is uh, that um, uh, this chain is stable. So that's like two main pillars of our first die. Well, and third thing which was important is like how to make it uh, inexpensive to operate. So that's uh, like how to make this consensus scalable and uh, make it cheap, you know, mm. anyone can launch it. So that's also, uh, I like things that people can run on their own, right? Like they don't, yeah. they don't need kind of team of uh, like, if you try to run EOS or, you know, some other chains uh, like yourself, it's very hard to actually uh, figure out how to run it with, with XDAI. If you want to have your own chain like XDAI, you can do it relatively easy, right? Just, you know. Mm. find two friends and launch it yeah so yeah i'm just going to jump in there you mentioned um you know that this is sort of um a second layer solution so you guys have been around since 2018 what then makes you guys different um from other scalable solutions like matic for example uh what is uh, we are focused on developer experience right so the idea of, of xdi is to be like neutral network neutral here is to be like switzerland for 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 the rest of the world right okay <laughs> without participating in wars, you know, in FAT, in FOMO, all the stuff, right? So we build tools for developers. So and our focus is like early Microsoft developers, 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 right? So our idea is, okay, can we make this uh, uh, experience uh, seamless till we have uh, the, uh, the the like end life point of the x right? And end life is uh, can, uh, till we be a part of uh, Ethereum 2.0, right? So we want to to have x as a as a kind of temporary solution between uh, what we have now with problems till we have Ethereum 2.0. And for sure, there is a space for uh, for side chains in Ethereum 2.0 infrastructure, right? So we are focused. Uh, we are focusing on uh, three main things. So one thing is uh, consensus, and our consensus is implemented in a solidity language which is uh, uh, which is quite interesting because this type of consensus is relatively easy to understand and to modify if people want to launch their own and also it works within a deterministic system within ethereum virtual machine which is important so second 
is our block explorer. Uh, I don't know if you know or not, but uh, uh, most of these hundreds of side chains, they, are, they don't have their own explorer, right? So that's, that's a big problem in Ethereum that mm-hmm. uh, it's relatively hard well, it's very hard to get on either scan, right? It's only for Ethereum, and I don't know for how how much money CZ purchased this uh, uh, hosting. So it's only for CZ and for mainnet, right? So all other chains, they they have to they have to develop their own explorer or to use an open source. And our open source explorer is used by most of EVM chains. If you think about Celo, Matic, Ethereum Classic, Rootstock, you know, they all use our explorer. And, you know, it's free and open source, and that's our contribution to community. Um, and we're helping, you know, to customize for, for, for their needs. Um, so we want kind of to make bigger and greater Ethereum ecosystem, right? And third is uh, our interoperability solution. So our bridge is used by, by us, by POA, by Thunder Core and Ethereum Cloud and the uh, Energy Web Foundation and some, some other chains. So the, uh, the interoperability is hard, right? That's um, it's uh, like security-wise, it's hard to do. Operation-wise, you know, you, you take risks on both chains and uh, mm-hmm. there is no like a silver uh, bullet for how to like build it. For example, you know, for, for consensus, we have proof of work and proof of stake, right? They both are kind of great. Um, and uh, they they both provide different um, uh, kind of security guarantees and uh, like uh, scalability uh, practices, right? On two mm-hmm. so, but they both work in production on like big scale, right? With uh, with interop, it's different. It's like everyone is exploring. There are several approaches. They're like they're not easy. So some of them are good from the cryptographic perspective, but they're kind of ex- expensive. Let's say if you need to verify block headers uh, of another chain, let's say in Ethereum, it's expensive, and the question is like who is paying for it, right? So we have. Yeah. We had several uh, in, um, iterations of uh, interoperability solution, and our uh, token bridge is on fourth gen right now. It's uh, it's what is known as optimistic, so it consumes uh, less uh, resources than other solutions. And also, we are pioneering what is known as arbitrary message passing, so when uh, chains can interact with each other uh, without uh, kind of knowing specific uh, contact types. So do, I'll, I'll just jump in then. So so does with all of that in mind, that you've just explained for us, then so does X die chain on Ethereum? compared to does it compare to a parachain um, on Polkadot? Uh, parachain is more standard standardized uh, uh, thing so like uh, mm-hmm. parachains they all live in the view of uh, Gavin Wood right so how, how he designed the thing here we, ha- we have uh, kind of different approaches you know Matic have their own we are doing our own stuff right so it's I think it's uh, it's more freedom in Ethereum space so people can you know build more crazy stuff um, but eventually the 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 um, if we think like in high abstraction uh, mode then it's uh, yeah it's kind of the same you have one chain which is providing security it's a relay chain in Polkadot world and you know Ethereum 1.0 and Ethereum and also you have side chains, uh, which are kind of side chains. Is like um, uh, it's like they're like shards, right? But they're not from yeah. they're not like authorized shards, right? And you have authorized shards in, in Polkadot, which are parachains, right? And these parachains, um, yeah, well, it's it's good to see how this model works, but it's um, it's uh, it's not it's not yet, right? Just to Right. to see if it's like a viable model or not right what is more what is more viable uh federation like in polkadot or like uh, interaction of uh, like multiple uh, independent uh, entities mm-hmm. like countries in the world right when there's like eu countries right where they're just not federated but you know their own countries yeah yeah, no, I know I'm following you. So so I kind of just want to move on a little bit, actually, because this is very technical. So actually, it might sort of be a bit related. But in terms of adoption, right, what do you think some of the biggest hurdles are for cryptocurrency adoption, particularly when it comes to payments? Um, you know, because when we talk about crypto, like, you know, the beginning part of this interview, it is very technical. So I wonder whether you think the technicalities that we've been discussing are in itself a hurdle for adoption. Uh, there, there, there are different aspects of adoption. Right, so we mm-hmm. at least in in, in our space uh, we saw that uh, X die is like perfectly fit into what is known as crypto pop up events when people are using crypto in real life uh, on like conferences and meetups and speakeasies. So that we we figure out that with uh, tools like Burner Wallet where you can create a wallet without you know creating private keys and all this uh, uh, hurdle of uh, creating you know setting up your new wallet, it's relatively use easy to use for you know regular people. So the biggest problem. For 
for adoption of this type of applications is COVID, right? Because people don't do conferences nowadays. But we see that people are, you know, interested in uh, new stuff, which is, uh, you know, yield farming and uh, all, all this um, uh, liquidity farming um, mm-hmm. stuff. For this, we need uh, scalability uh yeah. different type of scalability right so that, that's uh, that w- actually it's quite good when we need scalability it means that uh, we hit limits and you know we need to increase the um, uh, some some technology aspects uh, I mean that that's that's good that we hit scalability issues all the time yeah <laughs> it means we've gotten to some point so we sort of we're, we're growing I yeah, guess yeah. you know I guess it's a good thing to require it but there are a lot of different um, opportunities when it comes to staking um, altcoins, right? So especially in 2020 with everything that we've heard about DeFi. So in terms of staking stake, um, how is that different from other altcoins? Yeah, so in in, 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 our, in our staking model, so we we designed the model that it can be staked on, on multiple chains. Uh, so usually when you have a staking token, let's say it's, uh, you know, dot in, in Polkadot, it's staked on uh, on the uh, on the um, relay chain, right, on one chain, and after security is uh, um, and, uh, related to, to underlying parachains, right? So we, what we want to do is to have a one staking token which can migrate from different chains and uh, be applicable where we have, you know, ne- new uh, use cases for this uh, staking token and we already have it uh, working on um, uh, on, on XDAI as a staking token and on Ethereum uh, as a also as a staking token on uh, on XDAI it provides security to proof of stake consensus and on, on Ethereum it provides um, what we call easy staking so it's a way to basically farm liquidity for um, uh, for stake to ETH pair so it's incentivized people who are staking uh, in like in two, two tokens on Uniswap, so that's uh, that's bigger risks than just taking, um, but it's also uh, like bigger reward. Bigger risk, bigger reward. Yeah. That's just how it is. <laughs> um, but you know, I think you're kind of the perfect person to ask this to then. So, so can you tell me then what are your thoughts on Uniswap and AMA? Well, Uniswap is AMM itself, right? It's actually the, like the the king of AMMs. So I mean that other uh, other AMMs uh, they have different models. So what they're trying to achieve is to uh, like minimize slippage when you make trades. Right, and uh, some achieve it through like different invariants, like in curve. Right, some trying to achieve it with like uh, stealing someone else's liquidity, like social swap. Right, and uh, some of them are trying to achieve by uh, having like hyper parameters, uh, like balancer, where you have uh, a pair not of two tokens, but uh, you know six tokens, and you have different weights of these tokens. Um, yeah, so that's uh, like speaking of what is the difference of AMM and traditional MM that you don't need a, a market making uh, provider and anyone can be market making uh, themselves and that's one of the biggest achievements of uh, of 2020 that projects can launch their their projects uh, with tokens without having uh, uh, traditional market makers right so like they can provide initial liquidity let's say from you know raise capital from private uh, investors uh, and have launch on uniswap you know or social swap or success swap whatever or balancer so that's that's a great achievement not only that uh, automated market makers are providing liquidity and you know helping this uh, um, industry to move forward right but that's also a new way to launch projects which is very exciting. I think that's... So with all of that in mind, then you have to tell us what are your favorite DeFi projects at the moment? Uh, It's hard to select one. So my favorite projects are projects which are helping other DeFi projects, all projects which are making this uh, synergy effect of uh, of DeFi, right? And it's, uh, you know, for sure it's Uniswap because it's... uh, making everything else uh, uh, working uh, together through like liquidity providing. Uh, I like this uh, LP mining and um, and uh, actually using of LP tokens, uh, which is like liquidity providing tokens uh, for uh, new use cases. I expect that we can, we will see new DeFi projects uh, based on LP tokens. Uh, for example, why not to, you know, land LP tokens to get, you know, DAI, for example, right? Um, uh, what else? Um, yeah, all this, all, all the borrowing uh, services, all the services which are trying to, to implement uh, borrowing without uh, uh, over collateralization, which is important, right? Like Aave is, is a great example. <laughs> it's, it's, hard, it's hard to say. I love them all, right? Uh, but the, the most important part here, in the, especially in 2020, that the projects started to work together, right? In, in the last hype that we had in 2017, projects 
try to compete with each other and partnership was like about uh, you know just making announcements now partnerships are when you see that something is working together very well and that's actually what we see with uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, our project too that uh, you know we make a new bridge which is like allowing tokens uh, uh, to move between chains without like creating contracts for these tokens on, on sign and yeah. uh, this is our new approach and we see that you know different projects started to like go to 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 through this bridge and uh, deploy solutions which are using um, different DeFi uh, applications together on a side chain, right? Because if something is working together on mainnet, it's it can work together on side chain, and this is a this is a crowd effect which is uh, which is hard to stop, right? So our, because our adversaries of like DeFi space, they're not they're not popped up yet, right? <laughs> they're waiting to to make a hit, right, on the industry. So that's that's good that uh, kind of all these projects are working together. I think that's very important. Yeah, I think it's very tricky right now to sort of pick uh, your favorite DeFi project um, because like you said, they're all sort of working together to create a better financial future for us. Um, but just finally then, I have to ask you, what will push stake to a $1 billion market cap? Yeah, adoption, adoption, adoption. That's uh, that's uh, that's the most important part for 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 any token. Uh, we see that uh, um, developers uh, are using uh, XDAI, and uh, every week we have uh, new applications coming, and we actually don't have enough you know resources to write about all the projects which are migrating to XDAI. Uh, and um, yeah, that's that's something that I think can help to um, to grow the, the the value of of the token which is providing security at all the side chains. Adoption seems to always be uh, sort of what we end up coming back to and you know how we can make things scalable, how we can make things user friendly um, and how I guess we can sort of educate um, and make things um, easier for newcomers in the space. Igor, I want to thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure having you on the show with us today. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, bye bye. Bye, thank you so much.